Today's $850 gaming PC focuses on squeezing out the absolute most FPS per dollar value, but I'm also starting a new system for the way we do things around here. The goal is to make this build as easy to copy as possible, especially for people who have never built a gaming PC before. Link down in the description is a cheat sheet with way more information that I'll cover in this video to include alternative parts, BIOS settings, a cable management guide, monitor recommendations, all sorts of stuff, and it's all totally free. Also link down there is a step-by-step -step building video of this PC, which we extracted from the original live stream, and even a full benchmarking video for all the games that we tested. I'm trying to give you as much value as possible, so if you want to build this PC, no matter what your skill level is, you can do it. In this video, I'm going to show you all of the parts inside of here, talk about why I picked them, and we'll of course take a look at how it performs as well, which by the way is pretty impressive, such as this over 100 FPS in Cyberpunk with high settings. This is the pinnacle of a pure performance gaming PC here here in 2025, so let's get into it. All right, so the bread and butter of this build and the price to performance concept is definitely the GPU, which is the Intel Arc B580. For $250, this card consistently beats the more expensive RTX 4060 by about 10 to 20%, and it's also packing a much appreciated 12 gigabytes of VRAM. The problem though is obviously availability, especially if you don't live close to a micro center. Hopefully this changes over time and sooner rather than later, but from what I've been hearing, micro center is the only consistent way to score this card. Nope. If you don't have a micro center or if you just don't want to experiment with an Intel GPU, then definitely check out that cheat sheet in the description, which has a few alternatives, such as a much easier to get RTX 4060. You can definitely just copy this entire build, but swap out the graphics card and it'll still be perfectly relevant. Just know that the B580 is gonna be the best in terms of FPS per dollar value. One thing to be aware of, however, is the overhead issue that the B580 has with budget range CPUs. And I actually had to change my original CPU choice because of that. I originally wanted to go with the Ryzen 5 5600. And although I'm sure that would be fine and most gamers won't even notice a thing. The hardware unbox video did highlight that even the 5600 limits the performance of the B580 a bit more than it should, at least with the more CPU demanding titles. And no, this isn't just a rebar issue. This whole problem isn't the end of the world. And like I said, most PC gamers probably won't even notice, but for a pure performance build guide, I wanna keep this PC optimized. So instead I opted to go with the Ryzen 5 7600, but of course I did snag it from AliExpress to keep our price to performance metric high. I got mine for $165 and that's usually the going rate for these, but that's a solid 20 to $40 cheaper than what you'll find on places like Amazon or Newegg. It's perfectly fine if you don't want to shop from AliExpress, just know that you'll have to add that 20 to $40 on top of your total build cost. The 7600 provides a super fast six cores and 12 threads, which are perfect for gaming. And this CPU actually pairs very nicely with some higher end GPUs as well for a nice upgrade path. It's also on the AM5 platform, which is the pinnacle of upgradability right now. Speaking of which, the motherboard we're plugging this into is the MSI B650 Gaming Plus Wi-Fi. And for about $150, this motherboard will allow you to upgrade that CPU later on down the line. I don't think the VRMs in here are the greatest or anything, but we've been having some really good reliability and results with this board, so I'm a big fan of it right now for the price. I'll have it linked down in the description along with all the other parts in this build. Just as a heads up, absolutely none of these parts were sponsored or anything for today's video. Next up, we have the RAM, and this Silicon Power Zenith 32 gigabyte DDR5 kit is really tough to beat right now for these types of builds. This is clocked at 6,000 megahertz with a CL rating of 30, and if you're searching for RAM, on PC part picker, that's the exact search filter that you should use. Feel free to go with any kit that you find a good deal on with these specs, but for the last six months or so, this kit is usually the best option. What's also usually the best option is the SSD, and it's again from Silicon Power. It's the UD85, and this is a one terabyte NVMe Gen 4 drive with a decent read and write speed. They're certainly not breaking any records or anything, but for a pure performance build, we don't wanna waste our money on parts that don't move the FPS needle. To be honest, any Gen 4 drive is usually gonna be enough for just gamers, so feel free to go with whichever one you find a good deal on for around $50. Again, I'll list out my favorite alternatives in that cheat sheet, which is linked down below. Moving on, we have the power supply. And honestly, I probably could have saved a little bit of money here, but it depends on who you ask. This is the MSI Mag A650GL, and it's actually a really solid tier B unit, which cost me $70. A tier B power supply is definitely something to shoot for, but in my opinion, it's not absolutely necessary for a more budget $850 build like this. Usually my motto is to go with a tier C power supply for any build under about $1,000 
$1,000, but tier B is obviously better, so we're perfectly fine. By going with a tier C unit like the MSI Mag A650BN, you could save another 20 bucks or so and it'll get the job done just as a heads up. If you don't know anything about this tier system, then just head on over to zttbuildhelp.com and click on the PSU tier list section. This not only has a link to the tier list, which was created by people way smarter than me, but also a quick explanation of how to use it. And with a pure performance gaming PC, we're obviously not gonna be plugging in any cable extensions or anything like that. I know I use them for almost all of my gaming PCs, but when we're focused on FPS per dollar value, we don't wanna waste any money that doesn't improve performance. And speaking of which, your case selection usually doesn't have much effect on performance either. Sometimes it does if the cooling is really bad, but we shouldn't have to worry about that with this Okinos Oak Cypress 5 Air. Ever since I saw this posted in the ZTT Deals channel in our Discord server, I've been itching to use it and I'm definitely glad that I did. For 55 bucks, we're not only getting the super relevant and modern wood grain look, but it also comes with four pre-installed black fans, so we're good to go on cooling. Cable management was also pretty solid in the back because on the left-hand side, there's a nice little valley here to stuff some cables. And if you're worried about cable management, this is also where I'm providing value in that cheat sheet. I took some screenshots of the various stages of my own cable management and explained exactly how to do it. Not to keep repeating myself, but again, the goal here is to make this as repeatable as possible. And I know a lot of you PC building rookies worry about cable management. So in that cheat sheet, I got you. And finally, the last part we have in here is the CPU cooler because when we buy the CPU from AliExpress, it usually doesn't come with one. This is the Thermalrite Assassin Spirit 120 Black. And for $23, I have absolutely nothing negative to say about it. I don't know why I haven't used this one yet, but it's got good enough cooling performance for the 7600 and it's perfectly all black, including the heat sink. So no complaints for me. If you were to buy your 7600 from Amazon or Numic, then I'd strongly consider just using the stock cooler that it'll come with. It's not gonna compete with the bigger coolers, but for the non-X version of the CPU, it gets the job done and it can save you a little bit of money. The aesthetics are actually clean and minimal as well. Overall, here's what the final parts this is looking like. And as you can see, we hit the nail on the head here at exactly $850. Again, there is gonna be some variability depending on where you buy your CPU from, where and if you can get your hands on B580, as well as which power supply you go with. But either way, about $850 is what you should shoot for for this type of build. And honestly, this is pretty repeatable, especially if you live close to a micro center. And just as a reminder, before we jump into the benchmarks, if you wanna see the full step-by-step -step PC building video, which is a condensed down version of the live stream without me reading all the donations, reviewing my beer and yapping like crazy, the link for that is down in the description. But now let's see what the Ryzen 5 7600 and B580 PC is capable of. And the first game we'll jump into is the new Marvel Rivals. I've been playing this one just a bit every now and then, and we even fired it up during the recent Discord moderator LAN party. With this PC, I averaged 116 FPS in 1080p with medium settings. For another slightly newer title, we have Black Myth Wukong, and in 1080p with medium settings again, we got 87 FPS. Definitely could go up to high if you want to, but I prefer the higher frame rates in almost every title. Now here's Delta Force, and with 1080p and medium settings, I got 112 FPS, which sounds pretty good, but here you'll notice that the 1% low isn't that great down there at 29 FPS. We actually had that same exact issue with Once Human as well. The average FPS looks really great, but the stuttering is a bit more apparent with these newer titles. I honestly don't think this is anything more than newer games not quite being optimized yet with the new Intel architecture though. We had these same exact issues with these games in our last B580 video, so it's just something to be aware of. And finally, here's the rest of the games that we tested for this PC. I actually just showed you probably the worst results out of all of these. Almost every other game is cranked up there towards 1080p high or very high settings. For a brand new gaming PC, exactly at $850, this results in a pretty solid gameplay experience, and you can even push this up to 1440p in most titles if you want to. These results are pretty close, but on average, just a bit better than a similar setup with a more popular RTX 4060. But I do also wanna talk about the cooling real quickly, and instead of just showing you the fully blasted stress testing numbers, let's look at how it performs when actually just gaming. Here's our Apex Legends clip, and this title usually balances out both the CPU and GPU utilization, usually not blasting either one of them, and as you can see, the 7600 was comfortable around the mid 70s and the GPU was hanging out around 60, which is great. For a more GPU intensive title, here's Cyberpunk. And this one had the B580 pushed to 99% utilization the entire time. And the GPU is getting a bit toasty up there towards the low 80s, but not to the point where I'm actually worried about it. And for a CPU demanding title, here's Valorant. It's actually not super demanding. It just relies on a good CPU more than the GPU. The 7600 was only being pushed towards the 40 to 50% mark and it's staying under 70 degrees the entire time. And yeah, just as a final reminder, if you wanna see those longer benchmarking clips and a ton of extra games, we just uploaded a dedicated video for that over on the ZTD Extras channel. But yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this pure performance B580 build. And if you wanna copy this for yourself, that totally free cheat sheet is down in the description. Don't forget to drop a like if this video brought you some value and feel free to check out this video, which is a different way that we use the B580 in a bit more of an aesthetic build.